Crossrail is a very challenging project. It's the most challenging thing I've, I've ever done. If you think about Crossrail, if you look at it from 40,000 feet, it's essentially a state-of-the-art tunnel underneath London, joining two what originally were Victorian railways in, in Great Eastern and Great Western. So there's a big mishmash of technologies on, those, on the base of those railways. Some of those technologies date back to the 1950s. There's a system called AWS, which is what keeps the trains safe on Great Eastern and Great Western. And then there's an upgrade to that system called TPWS, Train Protection Warning System, which was brought in after some of the accidents we had in the 90s. So Crossrail has to have the unenviable task of being future-proofed in terms of having the latest technology. And we're buying that technology from people like Siemens and Bombardier, and they only ever sell the latest technology. We're also trying to make this railway last for 100 years. It's the first interoperable railway that we have in the UK. And it's interoperable because we've chosen a technology called ERTMS, European Rail Traffic Management System, to be the heart of the system because it's future-proofed for the Great Eastern and Great Western Railways and also because it's, it's, it's a modern, safe system of separating trains. The challenge of making ERTMS work uh, in the UK is that you have to make it compatible with the legacy signalling systems I spoke about before, AWS and TPWS. But the real challenge has been um, making that system work as a metro system through the tunnel. So we've had to incorporate into that mix another signalling system, a third signalling system called CBTC, which is Communication Based Train Control, developed by Siemens. And this system is, like I said, would be what you'd see on any mass transit system. It's a high precision signaling system, and it's high precision in that it can manage stopping distances incredibly accurately to align doors, and it's got additional levels of safety and interfacing with things like tunnel ventilation and timetabling, and how, how the service can recover from problems that happen in a metro scenario. So you can see because we've got a tunnel joining two legacy systems, having to be future ready, we've had to have three signaling systems. And that means we've got a very complicated train that has to work over all of those systems seamlessly. That's where we're getting to now. We're doing the final transition testing. We have 200 test cases, which we are working on completing successfully before we enter into passenger running and we have what's called a regression argument against the software so that we don't have to actually do regression testing to prove that future builds of the software have unraveled any of the code that those test cases have proven already. We're in the end game now of proving those remaining test cases between now and 2020.